Hello and welcome back to another resource pack development episode. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at how to make alternating block textures. So I've kind of created some designs right here. I have one for the grass. You can kind of see the difference between the different shades in the grass. It's very subtle, but it's something that I really, really like. It really, it brings, it ends up breaking up the, the grass up a bit, as well as uh, these bookshelves that I've created. So I have some with a purple book instead of the blue book. And they have some with a little gap instead of uh, whatever, whatever this thing is supposed to be. Um, but we're going to be looking at exactly how to make this and how to change uh, how often we want one form of book to show up. And then at the very end, I'm going to be showing how to organize your files. So that way it's a bit cleaner uh, when you start doing a lot of alternating textures with uh, different blocks. Now to start off, we're going to want to open up our resource pack folder and our resource pack development folder uh, if you have your assets separated from your actual resource pack. Now, if you don't remember how to get to your resource packs folder, you go to your Minecraft, then options, then resource packs, then open the pack folder and I bring up your resource pack folder. Uh, drag your resource pack over if you have it in your resource pack development folder and then enter your resource pack, go to assets, then Minecraft, and then textures and then block and here is where we're going to be uh working on the textures um so we're going to end up wanting to get our assets for whatever texture you're going to be wanting to change or making alternate versions of in this case in my case i'm going to be going with the warp nylium so i'm going to be uh going to my warp texture and i'm going to be copying over the warped nylium side as well as the warp nylium png and I'm going to be dragging them over here uh, for me to change. Once you've done that, you have to open up your images in whatever program you want to draw in. In my case, I will be using a sprite again. Uh, again, you could use Photoshop, Affinity Designer, it doesn't really matter. I just use a sprite because it's meant for uh, pixel, uh, pixel art. So I'll drag my images over here and I have my two textures right here. Now I'm going to end up creating different variations of the same texture. I'm just going to make slightly darker versions in this case. So I'm going to go and make an adjustment and I'm going to put down the brightness just a few. Now, instead of saving them, uh, saving it to like take over the original image or to overwrite it, you want to save it as a different name. In this case, I will be naming mine Warp Nylium 1 just for the simplicity sakes. Uh, and then I will also be naming this one right here, the Warp Nylium side, uh, differently once I've edited the, the texture. So again, I'm going to be putting this down, I think three is what I did on the other one. Um, and then I will be saving as, So if you don't know how to do save as, control shift s saves as, and it, it makes an entirely new one. Uh, I'll name this one Warp Nylium side one, and then I will press OK. And then that saved the texture as a new uh, new texture. So if we go back to our blocks, you'll see four different textures. These are the darker versions. These are the lighter versions. Now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go back to your assets folder. If you have it separated, you're going to want to go to back to the Minecraft folder. And then here you'll see the models and then the block states. What you're going to want to do, you're going to want to go to models. And then over here in your main resource pack, you're going to want to go to the same place. Uh, we're going to want to go into block because we're working with custom blocks. And then I'm going to be looking up warped for, uh, for my texture. So if I looked up for the warped, in this case, where is it? Here it is. Uh, what I what I wanted to look for is the warp nylium. Once I found the warp nylium, you want to move it over. Now it took me a second to find it uh, because of all the different files. That's exactly why I said it's better to have your assets separated so that way you're not having to constantly search for your textures. Uh, once you've done that, you move it over into your own resource pack inside of the models folder inside of the block folder. Once and then you want to open up the file and in here is your texture. So. Uh, pretty much what it's saying here is that the the parent for this block is a cube bottom top, uh, which is like the style of block 
that you're trying to change it into. For a grass block, it's it's just called a block. And then for the bookshelf, it's a cube column because it has a different texture on the top uh, from the sides. The top and bottom have a different texture from the, the sides. With the warp nylium, we have three different sides. We have the top, we have the bottom, and we have the side. Um, in this case, we're changing the side and the top to a different texture. So uh, what we're going to end up doing is creating a folder. We're going to call it, uh, in my case, warped underscore nylium. You want to name it corresponding to whatever texture you're trying to change. And you're going to want to remember what case, uh, whether you made it uppercase or lowercase in terms of uh, your folder name, because that's going to be important. Uh, with what we're going to be doing later, it is a sensitive, uh, so name it accordingly. Make sure it's something that you can remember. And then you're going to want to copy your warp nylium texture or whatever folder uh, it is. Or not texture, you want to copy the, <laughs> the, uh, the file, .json file, and you want to make a copy of it inside of your folder. And we're going to name this according to our new texture. So in my case, it's warp nylium one. We have a different variant of the same thing. And we're going to be calling the warp nylium side one as well as the warp nylium one. So that's going to be calling the two textures. Now, uh, if we go back into our resource packs area and try to refresh, you're going to see we don't have a change in our textures. And that is because we have to mess around with the block states. Now the block states is pretty much telling the textures uh, to, to call the different variants. So we want to go back files. We're going to be wanting to go back to the Minecraft folder for both of them. And we're going to be opening up the block states folder. And inside of the block states folder, we're going to want to look up the warped one again. Uh, similar to, to the other, uh, the blocks, the block model folder, you're going to want to find the one with the corresponding name. So warped nylium right here. You move it over. You could, we're pretty much done with the uh, assets folder if you had it separated. Uh, so we're going to end up wanting to move this over. And open up the dot the dot json we can actually expand this once we've opened up the warp nylium uh dot json we're gonna want to call the different variants of the textures now to do this we're gonna need to use these square brackets which i ended up forgetting the first time that i ended up doing this uh this method and we're gonna want to add a comma after this first curly or this last curly bracket inside of the uh square brackets and we're gonna want to just tab that over and copy pretty much the string of text. Uh, we're going to want to remove that last comma right there. Instead of it being block forward slash warped underscore nylium, what we're going to want to do is if we go back to our resource pack and into our Minecraft and models area and into the block, we're going to want to call this folder the warped underscore nylium because right now we're looking for the models folder which we're in right now, and then we're, or we're, we're inside the models area inside of the blocks folder. Now, what it's looking for is the warp nylium, nylium.json. In this case, we were trying to look for warp nylium one JSON, which is inside of another folder. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to do block forward slash, and then we're going to do warped underscore nylium. Now, once you've done that, and remember, this is case sensitive, so make sure you have it capitalized or lowercase, however you have your folder named. Now that you've done that, you could save and you could go back into our resource packs area and refresh the, the resource pack itself. Okay, so I, I made the mistake of choosing a, a bad block to do alternating textures on, but as you can see right here on the sides, uh, the side is darker and technically the top is darker, but it's not much different from the other ones. But uh, just for this video, you kind of get the point. Uh, 
<laughs> you have your different alternating textures and they they're all um of like they're all randomly placed throughout the world now that we've done the alternating textures we can actually tell minecraft how often we want one of the textures to show up so let's say we want the warp nylium one to only show up every once in a while well there's a way to do that now to do that we're going to end up wanting to add a comma after both of these and then enter one line you don't necessarily have to enter but for the sake of making it a little bit nicer uh, and also i'm going to tab these over um we're going to end up doing that and making we're going to introduce this new variable called weight now weight is going to tell minecraft how often we want one of the textures to show up so let's say we want this one to be uh, 12 and then we want this next one to be four then the regular warp nylium is going to show up more frequently than warp nylium one once you've done that we can go back to minecraft and we'll see the difference so just as a reminder we have we have one right here we have two right here and then we have two right there of of the darker variants but once we refresh the resource pack you can see it's changed now it doesn't look like it's changed too much uh but there is a lot less of this darker variant so if we kind of just cut away at it we get more of the lighter version of it than we do the darker version especially right here you only got two of the dark versions compared to the rest and so pretty much what it's saying is it, it pretty much does it as a percentage so let's say this if we have we if we add both of these numbers up we get 16. So three fourths, three fourths of the time, it's going to be the lighter version of the warp nylium compared to the dark version, which only shows up one fourth of the time. Uh, so you could mess around with these numbers. Um, you could keep it to 16. You can do it higher. I'm pretty sure uh, with the numbers and change the exact like percentages a lot more accurately. You, I think you could do it between one and a hundred. Um, you might be able to do more. I'm not exactly sure the numbers, but I've been just doing 16 because that's the way I ended up learning it. Um, but you could change the, the amount of time or the how often a certain variant shows up. Now, once you've done that, you could pretty much replicate the exact same process for every other texture you're going to be creating for that block type. Now, I will say it gets a lot harder to manage a bunch of block variations. So that's why I'm going to show you how to make it uh, easier to organize your files. I will say I had an issue when I was trying to do this uh, organization method uh, with the bookshelves, specifically uh, these bookshelves, because um, uh, it, it wouldn't work for some reason. Um, and I think it has something to do with it being a column block technically compared to the grass block, which is just a block. And I'm not sure exactly why it's not working. So if any of you guys are well equipped in your uh, resource pack knowledge, uh, I would I would love to know exactly why and if there is a fix to this. Uh, but I'm going to show you the method that I ended up using for the grass block as well as the, the nether plants I have right here. Now, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go to the Minecraft folder and then we're going to want to go to the models folder into the blocks now in here we're going to end up finding the warp nylium uh, dot json as well as the warp nylium one dot json now we're going to take these and we're going to want to keep them on the side over here now we're going to want to go back we're going to want to go back over to the minecraft folder and then go to textures then block now inside of the block folder, we're going to want to create a new folder called Warp Nylium, exactly how we named the other one. So I can actually press the underscore instead of the, the plus, that'd be great, this video. Uh, and we're going to want to drag all our textures in there. And now we have all our textures in one place. It'll make it easier to get back to when we have a ton of textures inside of this folder. Uh, and then we're going to want to change exactly where we're calling the texture from. So in this case, we're calling the textures folder. The textures folder, it has the 
blocks folder inside of it. And so inside of the blocks folder, we're going to want to find the warped un uh, underscore Nylium folder. So we're trying to change the top and the side. We're not changing the bottom. The bottom is still netherrack. We're not, we're not doing anything to that. Uh, you could of course change it if you have like a darker version. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to do it for the sake of this video. I didn't really like the texture, so I might change it later. Um, so we're going to we're going to call it block forward slash warped underscore Nylium. And we could, we could pretty much just copy that. I can highlight correctly. Uh, and we're going to do the same thing over here to the side one. We're going to save this one and we could pretty much exit out. And we're going to do the same thing to the warp Nylium one. So again, what we're just saying is we're inside of the blocks folder and underneath the textures folder inside of another folder called warp Nylium. And we're calling this texture. Very similar to how we did it inside of the block states uh, folder for the dot JSONs inside of the models folder, uh, except we're doing it with the textures instead here. Now, if we go back to Minecraft and refresh and we place it down, you can see we're still getting the, the different variants, but it's in a much more organized manner. So that way, when you're you go back to editing some of the textures, it'll be much, much easier than having to go and search through a bunch of of textures, a bunch that are exactly the same, kind of like the bookshelf. Again, this method isn't perfect. Obviously, it didn't work out for the bookshelf for some reason. I'm not exactly sure why. Again, if any of you guys know, I'd love to know. <laughs> I, I enjoy learning about uh, the resource packs and how to make them uh, more, easier, both on you, the creator, as well as the user. When it's easier for everybody, then you know you've done well as a resource pack creator. Anyways, that's going to do it for this episode. If you guys enjoyed the, the video, I'd really appreciate uh, a like. And if you guys want to see more content like this, uh, subscribe because we're going to be doing a lot more resource pack videos down the road. We're going to be rolling this out every other day uh, for the next month and then we might slow down and do a video every few weeks instead once uh once we've kind of run down uh the main basics of how to make a resource pack so again thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in the next video